Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, as you can see, I'm wearing my Raptors shirt. The first game of their series against the Golden State Warriors is tonight. So, this video is coming out tomorrow morning. Hopefully they won. Uh, fingers crossed on that. Now, as you can probably see, we've moved into our new place. And uh, if you've been following me on Instagram, uh, you might have noticed I've been taking the GO train every day now, which is absolutely awesome. Um, I do suggest people to go check me out on Instagram, uh, reese.m.martin. Feel free to direct message me there or just take a look at my images and stories about kind of random stuff as well as transit related stuff. But it's a great place to have an interesting conversation and I'll reply to your messages. Since the channel is still relatively small, I can still reply to people's direct messages and I also still try to reply to everyone's comments. So the big news of the day was announced by uh, Jeff Yurick and Phil Verster as well as some other people from the government as well as people from the Infrastructure Bank and it's that the Go RER or as the PCs call it Go Expansion project is basically moving into procurement. Now I should be specific here since I know you guys are pretty technical people. That's phase two of the project which is the on corridor works. So that includes basically everything on the tracks. So the actual uh, potentially electrification infrastructure, the trains, the operations and the facilities for doing operations and maintenance, uh, the maintenance and the service operation, operations, lots of operations, uh, as well as the procurement of rolling stock. So to be honest, all the interesting parts uh, primarily. Uh, grade separations and station upgrades are other pieces. Those are of course ongoing. The Stovall line is currently getting double tracked as you guys will have seen on my Instagram. Uh, lots of stations are getting upgraded as we speak. So that's all fantastic news. But this is all about how is service going to become more frequent, uh, more often, all day two way on at least five lines. So Lakeshore East, Lakeshore West, Barrie, Kitchener and Stouffville. and if we pray, maybe Milton, because the Milton line has a lot of demand. Uh, now, the announcement basically was nothing surprising. The government is funding it. The infrastructure bank is also putting money uh, towards the project. Uh, but uh, there's definitely some comments I have about this. Now, people have asked why we do these news videos, and the thing about the regular media is that they don't seem very well informed about transit or about the infrastructure, and they just don't seem passionate about it. They don't really ask great questions, in my personal opinion, and they don't seem to follow kind of the stuff Metrolinks releases, etc., and so they're not super well clued in. Uh, questions were asked today at the meeting if electrification was out of the scope now because electrification wasn't really explicitly mentioned. Of course, this project kind of originally came out of Go electrification. It was like a Go electrification project. But it's really not about that anymore, and I think that's good. The priority here, as much as I, I, I care about things like climate change, the priority needs to be about service, because especially with a government that really cares about the business case of things and not necessarily the environmental or social impact, the business case needs to be strong. And by providing faster service, more service, then there's a fantastic business case for this project. And actually, there's a great business case for electrification in general because it lowers maintenance and uh, kind of eliminates fuel costs. Electricity is just cheaper than uh, diesel fuel is. So some other interesting pieces to this uh, announcement uh, are that we now know who is officially bidding. Now, I think we already kind of knew these uh, the operating partners pieces of the bidding, which is kind of the most interesting part. Uh, the usual suspects are doing construction and other pieces like Alstom, SNC, Akon, uh, Dregados. Um, those guys, we've kind of all heard of them uh, in North America. They do tons of projects, especially in Canada. But what's really super interesting is the operating partners. They're all international and they are MTR out of Hong Kong, which is absolutely iconic in terms of transit, uh, DB from Germany, uh, kind of German National Railways, also quite iconic in the railway industry, SNCF from France, who runs services such as the TGV and uh, kind of some regional services as well, so they're super experienced, and then RATP, which is very interesting. RATP is actually the Paris uh, metro operator. They operate the kind of services within the Paris region because there's always been a kind of a conflict between the French state and uh, Paris itself. So they're also a separate operating partner from SNCF. 
Nonetheless, all of these companies are really experienced in operating frequent electric service. I need to clarify that because many people were suggesting that, oh, maybe we're not electrifying. Whereas in the announcement, it was explicitly stated that we're moving beyond diesel. Yeah, they were talking about how do we replace diesel. And now, of course, immediately after that said, a bunch of people came out of the woodwork and said, oh, hydrogen, it's, maybe it's gonna be hydrogen or the government hates us and so it's gonna be hydrogen. I, I think this is foolish because as much as you might not like a certain political party, they generally tend to act logically and the hydrogen plan is just not logical. Yes, Alstom has one hydrogen powered train mock-up and a few other companies do as well, but these trains are really not cut out for the type of service we need. Uh, the train Alstom has is a Coridia Lint. It's, it's a small train. Ottawa operates it on their light rail network. It, it's not gonna carry the type of numbers that we need to see on GO's network. We're gonna need to see something like what Sydney has on their uh, Sydney trains network, like double-decker EMUs, subway-style trains, essentially. So what is probably 99.9% .9 likely is that we will see catenary electrification. We're definitely seeing electrification of some sort, and uh, Phil Verster made it clear, like electrification economically makes the most sense. It's got the lowest life cycle costs, and honestly, I don't think any of these huge corporations is gonna take the risk on doing a giant, like multi-billion dollar project on an unproven technology, which essentially hydrogen is. Uh, I mean, there's test trains and there's some trains operating in a limited sense, but there is nothing near the level of what Go needs operating out there today. And there probably won't be for at least five to 10 years, if ever. Um, hydrogen technology, it's been around for a long time. It's been around since the early 2000s. And it's often been suggested that it's going to be heavily used in Sorry guys, there is an ice cream truck driving around, which is one of the strange disadvantages of living in a bit of a more suburban area. It's still near the train, but frustrating, especially when you want to make videos. So as I was saying, none of those international operators operate hydrogen networks currently. And all of the networks they operate that are anything like what Go RER or Go Expansion is supposed to be like are all catenary electric. So again, I really think it's unlikely. The whole hydrogen thing was mainly a kind of political stunt by the former Liberal government to kind of, you know, boost the Ontario economy because there is a cool company in Mississauga that builds hydrogen fuel cells. And I'm totally not against hydrogen as a technology, but it needs a lot more time to develop into something that could be used in this situation. So my guess is, has kind of always been proposed is what will happen is there will be a mixture of electric multiple units, maybe some electric locomotives, though I'm actually not as sure about that, and then just regular diesel trains servicing the Milton Line, the Richmond Hill Line, as well as maybe some of the outer reaches, like areas like Niagara, and maybe even out to Kitchener, though I would hope that can be electrified. So I think that's it. That's most of the announcement. Uh, I definitely ch recommend checking out the video. It's really quite good. Uh, everyone else is in Raptor's garb, which is why I had to wear the shirt. And there's a lot of trains passing too, which is hilarious. Like, they're talking about the transit expansion and they can't get like two minutes to talk before an express chain shoots through exhibition. Nonetheless, it's exciting. Now, all the pieces are together. So we have tons of station expansion, uh, tons of grade separation and track expansion work kind of across the network, you know, Barry Stouffville, there's work going on Lakeshore and Union Station Rail Corridor. We have tons of, just tons of projects, uh, as well as the LRT, the Ontario line. I mean, just under Metrolink's purview, there's four LRT systems. Then there's the ION system. Then there's the Ottawa system, which we will go check out. Then there's the REM in Montreal, plus the Green Line in Calgary, plus the stuff going on in Vancouver and in Edmonton. Transit Canada is looking absolutely fantastic this year. Anyways, guys, sorry we haven't been posting as often. We've been busy moving. I think the cadence of our posting will kind of increase now, now that we've kind of settled in, but thanks for watching today, and as always, have a nice one.